Some people respond to being rescued in ways you just never imagined. <laughs> oh, I'm up there. Naughty. <laughs> you guys been drinking? Oh, yeah. oh okay. Okay. The challenge to get a dislocated shoulder back in place. Oh, it's easy to have fun at Bondi. But powerful waves, rocks, and crowded surf also make it an easy place to get hurt. Dislocated shoulder, maybe? On average, lifeguards deal with two to three dislocations per week. Dislocated knees, elbows, shoulders, you name it. Uh, Bondi Central South Rhino, we're going to bring up a dislocated shoulder, boys. Yeah, copy, yay. Mate, I'm off here with Jeffy. Um, I'll get everything ready. Um, I'll get Jeff to get on the amber. Boys radioed it in and said they had a patient, Ollie, who's uh, from the UK with a dislocated shoulder. Ollie was surfing when he dislocated his shoulder. Maxi prepares methoxyflurane, an analgesic gas. You ever had one of these before? No, what no. is this? It's a pain relief. Yeah. So it uh, helps settle the pain. Oh. Went over that wave and it just it just popped down. I knew it as I was coming down. I was like, oh, this. And then got up. I was trying to pop it in myself for quite some time, but it just wasn't going in. It really hurts. Like, it, the, the intensity of the pain just builds up and up. You know, we gave him a few green whistles and he was bit off his head for a little while. You right? <laughs> this is good. This stuff is <laughs> sick. This is ridiculous. Tell the ambulance people to take their time. Just <laughs> tell them to take their time. This is fine for now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ordinarily, dislocated shoulders are treated in hospital. Hang in there. Today, though, Jill, an extended care paramedic, has come to put Ollie's shoulder back in place at the tower. There's a couple of techniques that we use, and a lot of time, it, the pain is so great. The muscle, your muscles get so tense, and that's, and that's what you're fighting against, and you need him to relax and work with you and trust. Ollie is administered with morphine in preparation for the procedure. I've got a rush to the head now, yeah. so it's going to be like a double rush to the head after this. Having the dislocation specialist come to our doorstep is it's it's a pretty unique thing. I've only seen it a few times and just watching him do it, it's it's pretty cool. You get another sort of aspect of how highly trained these people are and how good they are at their job. And this hand's gonna come off on my left shoulder. Oh, oh that's right. slightly painful. Oh naughty. Leslie, do you have a spare cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is that there was no one in the room called Leslie and he doesn't even smoke cigarettes, so he was out there. <laughs> I've seen the Ambos take about five or six times to get it in, but look, they have to be very patient to do that job. Let me take the weight of your left arm here. I'll start to try and put it in your mouth. Even though Ollie has been given morphine, and methoxyflurane, the pain will be unbearable if something goes wrong. Oh, Pull your shoulders back as much as you can. There you go. Excellent. That is how I want it. Excellent. Being a lifeguard, I want to learn as much as I can. So I kind of try and stick around and watch them. We have a couple of techniques that we use, and we can use them in combination with each other. And the last one I use is external rotation. Soon, Ollie's painkillers will wear off. Almost. Jill makes her final attempt. You could see in his face that it went back in and that he was out of pain. Well done, mate. Well done. It wasn't a real kind of thing. It just went in real subtly. It just sort of slipped back in. That looks a better looking shoulder. As the painkillers wear off, Ollie learns about some of his strange mutterings whilst under the influence of the green whistle. He was a bit shocked when we asked him, you know, who was Leslie and why did he want a cigarette? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I said this? Leslie, do you have a spare cigarette? <laughs> I was meant to meet someone today called Leslie, but I didn't even smoke. <laughs> so, 
half, half of it was right, but the rest was just... And now, have you spilled any water? Seemingly disorientated, the woman's condition suddenly changes. Yeah, guys. Hey, you guys, just come straight back to shore, please. She's gone. Two swimmers struggle to hold up a woman. As I was paddling out to the patient, I saw that the two blokes were, um, they were, they were really holding her up and keeping her afloat. She was definitely showing signs of um, fatigue. Whether she was unconscious or not, I, I wasn't sure. The woman is helped by her son and a member of the public. She just looked really limp. Her wrists were down. Just classic signs of, of possibly an unconscious patient, because I didn't know if her eyes were open or not. The patient looks pretty tired. <laughs> Might not be all that well. And now, have you swallowed any water? Are you dead? Are you feeling? <laughs> is she right to stand up? Or? Yeah. Hang on. Has she, has she got, hang on, has she got a bad back or has she always had a bad back? She's always had, I'm just worried she can't up I thought that I was going to have to at least get some oxygen on her and possibly call for, for an ambulance. She hasn't had a knock, has she? No, 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 no. Okay. Seemingly disorientated, the woman's condition suddenly changes. Oh, let's just take her up here. I might put her on the oxygen for a bit. What? Are you okay? I'm fine. You're fine? Okay. It was quite surprising when she perked up. It was almost like she just sort of got a bit of life into her and I was like, oh my God, you're actually fine. So that was just a massive spin out for me. You all right? Go, go, go. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Almost there. <laughs> People respond differently when you pull them out after doing a rescue. Some people will get out of the water and they won't even want to look you in the eye. Don't talk to me! Some people will stop and say, you've just saved my life. You right? Yeah. Other people are really embarrassed. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know I have experience from tides before, but not like that. <laughs> Some people respond to being rescued in ways you just never imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm almost there. Oh, yeah. I'm almost there. <laughs> We're in the tower. We've got our eyes on these tourists. We took our eye off the water for about 10 seconds. We look back. Next minute, there's 20 of them all stuck in the rip. They've drifted out of the flags, and they're in trouble. Keep going. Keep going. He's going to be swallowing some water this bike. Yeah, hang on. The new buggy gets you where you want to go, quick smart. There's only, like, probably a foot too deep the water, and then just all going under. Yeah, go Luke. Go, go, go. Oh, there goes another one. Go, beauty. He's just standing up a little bit, but then he drowns in about two seconds, then he comes back up. I'm paddling out, and I mean the seconds now between us getting to them and them going under. I get to the guy, get him on the board, and Unfortunately, they jump on feet first in the coffin position. I was on the binoculars, I could see their facial expressions. Some of them are laughing. <laughs> I don't know what they were laughing at, but something was pretty funny, apparently. <laughs> Maybe they were happy to be alive. Hey, boys. Come straight in. Not funny. Straight to shore. You can't swim. Sometimes it's a bit beyond the head scratcher for us. Without a doubt, it aggravates me that people laugh when they almost die. Yeah. Half of them are laughing because they got in, but the other two, their mates, pretty much are drowning and they don't even realise. It's a Korean church group and they either had God on their side today or they were just lucky that the lifeguards were doing a good job. Oh, almost there. Oh, yeah. Almost there. <laughs> it can't be common sense that makes you laugh. It's got to be pure embarrassment. People going swimming when they have no idea. Some of them were nearly drowning. They thought it was the funniest thing ever. Drowning at Bondi is definitely not a laughing matter. 
especially for the lifeguards. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, out of the back. Get out of the water, please. A group of men who lifeguards suspect have been drinking are causing headaches for singlets and Jethro. Bondi surf is a dangerous place at the best of times. Add alcohol and the dangers quickly multiply. If you mix a low swimming ability with alcohol and dangerous rips, there's only one outcome, really and that's to find yourself in trouble. As another low-pressure cell rolls in from the south, Jethro and Singlets come across a group of men swimming in the dangerous rip in front of the tower. If you want to swim, head down to the red and yellow flags. Yeah, seriously, have a think about it. We're just trying to get you out of the water so that you don't drown. Just help us out. Jethro decides to deliver the message face to face, but is met with an unexpected response. Oh, the guy in the yellow undies. Tell me to f off. Get out of the water, please. It's all fun and games now, but if something happens to someone, it won't be funny. So let's get out of the water, eh? We love to have a laugh, but there's times to laugh and there's times to be serious. And that was definitely a time to be serious. Hey, undie man. Come on. Come in. Then, Singlet smells alcohol on one man's breath. You guys been drinking? No, oh, no. You guys been drinking, eh? No, no. Dangerous, mate. Been drinking. You shouldn't be near the water, I'm telling you. Yeah. No, it's not serious, mate. If one of you drowns. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not funny. You can't drink and go in the water like No, that. no, no. Not drinking. Oh, come on. I can smell it, you know? Despite the warnings, the men go mate. back into the rip. It's at the point now I'm so angry at them. If they were to get in trouble now, they 100% deserve every second of trouble that they're in. Just such ignorance. And I guarantee you they're going back in. We'll be here for them, but we'll spray them. <laughs> we'll give them a good spray. Look at them. They're going back in as we speak. Oblivious to the danger, all the men finally return to shore. At least half of them are wearing undies. Are you with that crew? No. Here you are. No, no. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. It's <laughs> useless. You're going to go back and sit with them, are you? Then the group spontaneously breaks into dance. It's a full gypsy dance. Bunch of blokes having a good time. His first swim at Bondi Beach. Help me! There's a sinister menace in the water. Today we have small surf conditions, 28 degrees, light winds, and we have some blue bottles coming in. Also known as the Pacific Man of War, blue bottles pack a massive punch. In extreme cases, shock or an allergic reaction can lead to cardiac arrest. There's a long history of folklore about how to treat a blue bottle sting. A lot of the old guys from the surf clubs will tell you that urine's the best thing for it. Someone cop an open hand slap if they uh, try to urinate on me. <laughs> it started out with vinegar and then it was like cold water. Rub sand into it. We used to use this uh, blue o, which was a toilet detergent which we put into mix with water. We typically go with the ice just because it's the easiest for us to hand out. So, what is the best treatment? Mel Murray from the Australian Museum studies these unwelcome visitors. There are a huge amount of old wives' tales that are out yep. there. The preliminary research that's been done on the venom and the toxins, they believe that it's a protein-based toxin. So heat kills the protein. Right. Some sprays help neutralise the poison. But the most effective treatment is to immerse the sting in hot water. So that stops the venom from being injected and it also stops it from travelling around further. Late morning and the beach is still under siege. A boy presents to the tower after his very first swim at Bondi. Got a bit of a sting here. Nine-year-old Zach has suffered a blue bottle sting over his entire leg. Relax a little bit. Okay. Just chill out. 
Everyone's reaction to a, a blue bottle sting is vastly different. This kid was screaming and I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe it's just a little bit of an overreaction. I'm thinking, oh, this will this will calm down in a little while. No, 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 this, no, this is a magic spray. No, 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 no. It, it didn't really calm down at all. Zach arrived from the UK just four hours ago. Got attacked by probably one of the worst things that can happen to you at the beach. So, you know, I think for the for the poor poor thing, it was just this horribly overwhelming scenario. That poor father was watching his son scream for help and he couldn't do anything and and we really felt for him. Applying hot water is impractical in the tower. Look at this. It's going to fix it. Here we go. It's good stuff. It's going to fix it. It doesn't hurt as that. Where's it? Where's that? Oh, no. 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 It was a really difficult moment to not be able to take a child out of out of its pain and settle it down. That was just becoming extremely hard to watch. Team leader Harry's decides to take Zach to the showers and neutralise the pain with hot water. I'm a bit rattled. So we get him across the road to some hot water, which we think, you know, is a good chance of doing some good. And uh, now we hit another speed bump. Zach refuses treatment. And can you blame him? He just come out of the water and had a really bad experience. He's not so fond of going near water again. It's going to be okay, but it's better, I promise you. Just put some water on it. Yeah? That's it. It's going to be okay. I'm going to put that in a bit of warm water. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. Okay. Ah! No! Come on, come out. No! No, keep doing it, keep doing it. Okay, good boy. Oh, that's okay. Daddy. Then things get even more complicated. All of a sudden, I turn around and Dad's feeling faint. Good idea to get the ambo, have a look at him. Um, Dad's not feeling very well now. He's obviously built up a whole heap of adrenaline to protect his son, and then all of a sudden that adrenaline works off and he's in pain and he's just about to faint. Good. Sam, we're just worried about Dad now. His glands have come up in his groin, which is a, not a nice feeling either. So, uh, you know, I think Dad's doing pretty well to hold up and be pretty stoic despite the odds. I've got a son around the same age as Zach, so I can imagine exactly how the father feels. I thought he's going to go into a seizure. Mate, um, what do you think about using a whistle? 100% whistle? 100% singers. Yeah. Yeah. The green whistle is an analgesic gas that provides powerful pain relief. Harry's also decides it's time for backup. Ambulance, thank you. He might be in that one percentile where he's actually allergic to blue bottles. Zach's father is back on his feet as lifeguards administer the green whistle. So what you've got to do is you've got to put it in your mouth like this, all right, and just breathe it in, breathe it and in it's going to take the pain away for you. Breathe, good boy. Good boy, okay? Nice deep breath, good boy. I know. Oh, I know. Look how brave you've been. There you go. Oh, wow. Good man. That's progress. See, we're getting a lot better, aren't we? Yeah. How good silence. Huh? The sweet sound of silence. Golden. Ten minutes ago, wasn't the case. Yeah. your friendship being stunned by a jellyfish. Or a big jellyfish. Never seen a kid like that before. He's like almost possessed. And now he's he's in the shower cruising. Paramedics arrive to find a much calmer patient. Zach is given a clean bill of health. Hey Zach, how's your first trip to Australia, mate? Yeah, love, love this place. What do you think of Bondi? <laughs> oh, oh, thumbs down. Hey, what do you think of these guys? Oh, 